Hello and welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to talk about one very important pipe in Angular, which is async pipe and what is its use. So in simple terms, we use async pipe to handle asynchronous data. So we have learned that an observable or a promise returns an asynchronous data. And that asynchronous data can be handled using async pipe. Let's understand the use of async pipe with an example. In this web page, currently we are displaying a list of students in this table. Now what I want is, before this table, I also want to show the total number of students which we have in this table. For that, let's go to VS Code. Let's go to App Component class. And here, let's create a new property. And let's call this property total students. And to this property, I'm going to assign a promise. Okay, so here we want to return some asynchronous data just to understand how this async pipe works. Now, this promise takes a callback function and this callback function receives two arguments. The first argument is the resolve callback function and the second argument is the reject callback function. Now, inside the body of this callback function, let's call setTimeout function. Now, the first argument of this set timeout function is again a callback function. So let's specify that. And then the second argument is the time interval. So let's say the time interval is 2000 milliseconds. All right. Now inside the body of this callback function, the callback function of the set timeout, let's call this resolve method. And from here, let's return a resolved data. So what we want to return here is the total number of students which we have inside this filtered students array. So for that, let's say this dot filtered students, which is an array, and we want to return the length of this array. Okay. So here to this total students property, we are assigning an asynchronous data. This data will be assigned. The length of this filtered students property will be assigned to this total students array after 2000 milliseconds. That's because this promise will resolve after 2000 milliseconds. All right. Now let's go ahead and let's use this property in the view. So let's go to app component.html. And before this table, let's add a div. Inside this div, let's add an S3 element. And inside this S3 element, let's say total students. Then let's use colon. Let's use string interpolation. And inside this string interpolation, let's use this total students property. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And here you will notice that it is displaying this text total students. And then instead of displaying the total number of students in the filter student students array, it is displaying this text object promise. That's because here we are assigning a promise to this total students property, right? And a promise is nothing but an object. So initially a pending promise will be assigned to this total students property and this total students property will be assigned with the actual data, the total number of students in the filtered students array after 2000 milliseconds. Till that time, this total students property is storing a pending promise. And that's why you are seeing this text here after this total students. Okay. Now, instead of displaying the pending promise in the web page, we want to display the actual data. So we want to display the data which will be available after 2000 milliseconds. And for that, we can use async pipe. So let's go to app component.html. And here on this total students property, let's use this async pipe. So to use a pipe, we use this pipe symbol and then we specify the name of the pipe, which is async. Okay, with this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. Let me refresh the page. So you will see for two seconds, it is displaying nothing. And after two seconds, when the data is available, it is displaying the total number of students. Okay, so in this way, we can handle asynchronous data using async pipe. When we use an async pipe on an input, the value of that input will be displayed in the web page once the value is available. Okay. So this async pipe waits for the value to be available and then it displays the data in the web page once that value is available. Okay. So I hope with this example, 
the use of this async pipe is clear to you. We use async pipe to handle asynchronous data. This is all from this lecture. Thank you for listening and have a great day.